your pain is real. Yet for decades, doctors have repeated the same frustrating phrase. Everything looks normal. Fibromyalgia has baffled medicine for over a century, but recent research is revealing new clues. Could an undiscovered link between the immune system and fibromyalgia finally prove it to be an autoimmune disease? Or is there something else we still don't understand? In this video, we'll discuss the latest research and uncover what new insights reveal about this condition that is no longer as mysterious as it once seemed. But before we dive into what the research says, I'd love to know what you think. Do you believe fibromyalgia is an autoimmune disease? Let me know in the comments below. Fibromyalgia has long defied easy classification. In the early 20th century, when it was called fibrositis, researchers often grouped it with autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, mainly because of their shared symptoms of pain and fatigue. However, as medical understanding advanced, key differences between fibromyalgia and autoimmune diseases became clear. Unlike autoimmune diseases, fibromyalgia does not involve the immune system attacking the body's own tissues, a defining feature of autoimmunity. It also does not show evidence of the specific autoantibodies commonly found in autoimmune disorders. In autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, the immune system attacks healthy tissues, which can be detected by blood tests showing autoantibodies and signs of inflammation. In contrast, Fibromyalgia does not produce these autoantibodies or cause tissue damage. And in people with fibromyalgia, most standard lab tests for inflammation or immune activity come back normal. Today, fibromyalgia is classified as a pain processing disorder, characterized by widespread pain, fatigue, sleep disturbances, and cognitive symptoms. Despite this reclassification, about 25% of fibromyalgia patients also have an autoimmune disorder which has kept them grouped together. This overlap has kept the autoimmune debate alive, with researchers exploring whether shared mechanisms such as immune dysregulation could link these two conditions. Emerging evidence suggesting autoimmune links. In 2021, a landmark study led by King's College London, the University of Liverpool, and Sweden's Karolinska Institute reignited the autoimmune debate. Specifically, Researchers aim to determine if transferring antibodies from fibromyalgia patients to mice could reproduce the hallmark symptoms like pain sensitivity, muscle weakness, and nerve abnormalities observed in humans. By taking antibodies from fibromyalgia patients and injecting them into mice, the study aimed to determine if these immune system proteins could trigger fibromyalgia-like symptoms. If so, this would suggest that fibromyalgia could be an immune-related condition rather than one that was purely neurological. This approach also hoped to identify new therapeutic approaches, such as antibody-reducing treatments, and explore the possibility of developing diagnostic blood tests for fibromyalgia. The results, which demonstrated that fibromyalgia antibodies induce symptoms in mice, supported the theory that immune dysfunction plays a central role in the condition. However, the study had several limitations, and experts caution against calling fibromyalgia autoimmune just yet. The main reasons behind this are as follows. Unproven autoimmunity. The study did not identify exactly what the antibodies in fibromyalgia patients are targeting, which is an important requirement for classifying a disease as autoimmune. Additionally, fibromyalgia does not show the classic signs of autoimmune diseases, such as tissue damage or inflammation. Study Limitations The study tested antibodies in only 8 patients, which is a very small sample size and makes it hard to draw firm conclusions. In addition, the research focused only on physical symptoms like pain and weakness, while ignoring common cognitive symptoms of fibromyalgia, such as brain fog or sensitivity to light. And finally, it's important to note that no independent laboratories have yet to reproduce these findings. Repeating studies and getting the same results is a critical step in confirming scientific discoveries. Expert Skepticism Dr. Daniel Claw, a leading fibromyalgia researcher, disputes the study based on several factors. Here are some of what Dr. Claw had to say about this study. There are a number of reasons that I think this study is flawed. The primary one is that you can't actually replicate our autoimmune diseases. If you take someone with rheumatoid arthritis, 
and you take their serum and you give it to a rat, the rat doesn't develop rheumatoid arthritis. You can't transfer any of our autoimmune diseases to a rat or a mouse simply by injecting serum or plasma. There are these convoluted ways that we develop our animal models, but it is not just by passive transfer. That's overly simplistic and it doesn't work. If diseases we know to be autoimmune diseases, like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, can't be transferred, then why would you use that as the model to say, I know fibromyalgia is an autoimmune disease if it can be transferred to a rat or mouse? We know a lot about what fibromyalgia is, and it is not an autoimmune disease. Looking ahead, researchers are planning larger studies to test more patients and identify specific antibody targets. They also aim to investigate how antibodies might affect fatigue or memory issues, which are common in fibromyalgia but were not addressed in the initial study. While the study offers promising insights, patients and doctors should await further research before embracing immune-focused treatments. The journey to unraveling fibromyalgia is ongoing, and this study represents an important step toward unraveling its complexities. Additional new insights. Interestingly, separate research has revealed that fibromyalgia involves another immune connection related to inflammation of the immune cells in the brain and central nervous system, a condition known as neuroinflammation. In neuroinflammation, overactive immune cells in the brain and spinal cord, known as microglia, release inflammatory molecules that amplify pain signals and disrupt normal brain function. This neuroinflammatory state helps to explain symptoms like heightened pain sensitivity, fatigue, and cognitive challenges. Essentially, neuroinflammation alters the way the nervous system processes pain, making everyday stimuli feel more intense and overwhelming. Based on these new findings, it is possible that one day, fibromyalgia may be classified as an entirely new type of autoimmune disease, but more research is still needed. While there is growing evidence for an autoimmune component in fibromyalgia, the condition does not meet the full criteria for classification as an autoimmune disorder. Fibromyalgia remains a complex condition primarily rooted in the nervous system, but new clues hint that immune dysfunction could be a hidden piece. Though not yet classified as autoimmune, the condition's relationship with immunity is a new frontier of research, one that promises deeper understanding and hope for targeted treatments in the years ahead. If you would like to learn more about fibromyalgia and neuroinflammation, check out my other video, Brain on Fire, Fibromyalgia and Neuroinflammation Explained, linked in the top right corner of your screen. If you received value from this video, please like and comment, and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future videos.